Hello everyone, welcome back hey, to our channel, Worth the Wait. What's going on y'all? We, it's been a minute since we recorded. Um, we want to thank you all. I don't think we publicly did it in the video, but no, thank you yet. all for the love on our wedding trailer. Yes. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. You um, guys are so great. We yeah. love you all so much. Yeah, Every comment so much. and just email and message was so greatly appreciated. And we're just mm -hmm. tremendously thankful for all of you being with us. So yes, thank yes. you. So we're excited to record today mm -hmm. um, and to talk to you guys. Really good and topic. today's topic is actually based on a question that a subscriber sent to us mm -hmm. asking, how do you date without falling into sin? Yeah. And we really thought that was such a great question that it deserved a whole video <laughs> and not just a response, you know, in the comments or email. Right. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. How can you you know, in your courtship or relationship, how do you do that without falling into sin? For those of you who have been watching us from the very beginning, you probably saw our intimacy videos and also several other videos where we talked about some of our struggles when we were recording, um, but we never did a full out video on some practical tips of what you can do while you're courting to avoid falling into sin or, you know, giving into temptation. So yeah. that's what we're going to do today. And we pray that this video is a blessing. So, Amen. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> so first we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to actually fall into sin. What does that phrase even mean? Um, and then we're going to give two uh, biblical examples of um, being faced with temptation and how to respond to them. And then we're going to give you seven tips of what you can do to make it practical in your relationship and to keep from falling into temptation. Great, so the question asks, how do we date or court without falling into sin? And what's really important even before getting into uh, the practical tips of how that may be manifested in a courtship or in a dating relationship, we have to first identify what is it even to sin? What, is it, what, does, it mean, what does it mean to sin according to the Word of God? Uh, and 1 John chapter 3, verse 4 tells us that sin is transgression of the law. Now, somebody might say, okay, sin is a transgression of the law, but whose law, what law, what possible law could this scripture be referring to? And we won't go into a very in-depth um, Bible study on the many scriptures that point to what law um, this could possibly be, but we'll, we, what we will cite is some scriptures down below that you can study for yourself. And one of our favorites comes out of Matthew chapter 22, uh, where Christ is asked, what is the greatest commandment of the law? And then he identifies that first, your love for God, and second, your love for your neighbor. So from there, we can see the Ten Commandments of God. Uh, your God, God's Ten Commandments reflected in Christ's statement. For the first four commandments relate completely to our love for God, and the second six command and the last six commandments relate to your love for your neighbor. Um, and we believe that that's a great example, a great Bible reference that you know you can go back to and study and reference um, for yourself to know what it is. What what is God's law? Um, so that's what we would say. So sin is, is the transgression of the law, and that law belongs to God. Now, following in that same point, we also know from the book of James that to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And so to, to know the law of God and to know the commandments of God, and then to choose, willfully choose uh, to, do, to go against those is, as we've defined, as we've defined so far, is to sin and ultimately is to choose to walk in darkness rather than walking in the light, which is the word, which is Jesus. <laughs> but we don't want to go that deep, so we're going to stay, stay on the surface over here. But we want to go to one very important scripture in John 3.19 uh, that brings this point out a little, a little bit more for us. And it says in John 3.19, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So here Jesus is speaking and he identifies that it is the deeds, it is the works, the conduct of man, of, of, of what these men were doing, um, that was the source, that was the source of their um, propensity or, or their likening towards darkness rather than light. Um, and we also see David make this very clear in um, Psalm 51 verse 
Psalm 51 verse 4, I believe that against thee, the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. So here we see a connection between sin and evil. And now we want to look at two very well documented uh, stories in the Bible that really shine some extra light on this battle of um, temptation and falling into sin. So uh, right. let's jump right into that. Exactly. In, or what the responses were in those type of situations because right. essentially what we're looking at is how do you respond to temptation and how do you avoid falling into sin. Mm -hmm. So the first one, we decided to start with um, actually the first documented um, record of <laughs> sin and temptation, which is Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. So in Genesis 3, um, when the serpent approached Eve and was saying, was questioning, did God say this to you? And her response was in verse 2, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. But is that really what God said? The serpent was trying to test Eve in that moment and she responded but is that really what God said to them well if you go back to Genesis 2 verses 16 and 17 we have the record of what God said he said and the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die now, Dad ain't saying nothing about touching it. <laughs> but exactly. you inserted exactly. in there this whole point of we can't eat or touch it because then we're going to die. Now, why was it dangerous for Eve to add on to what God really commanded? You know, there's several references, and we're going to put them on the screen, of where God instructed or where we see how it's so important not to add or subtract from the Word of God. So now when the serpent appro approached Eve and she added to what was said, it actually demonstrated that she didn't, she probably really didn't know for sure. Or she just, maybe in the moment, we, you know, we can only take from the context of what it's saying, we don't have all the details here, but maybe in the moment she was just so amazed by what was going on, we, we don't know. But the fact is that she added to what God commanded. She wasn't sure. 100% and her, through her response we see that she wasn't sure about what she was saying or what God commanded and so her response ultimately led her into fall, to fall into sin and to eat of the tree because then the serpent was able to take those words and play on it and deceive her and so we use this as an example to show that if you don't know what the word of God says for yourself and you don't have it ingrained in your mind and in your heart it will be a little, it will be, a little, I don't know if I can say a little, <laughs> but it will yeah, be easier for you easier, yeah. to fall into temptation because you don't know what the word says. Yeah. So that's example number one. Yeah. For the second example, we're going to go just a couple chapters forward and look at the uh, story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife, which is another very popular um, story about temptation and just resistance to sin in the, in even the first couple books of the Bible. So let's go to Genesis 39. Um, verse 9 and um, for, sorry verse 8 and the context of what we're looking at is that Joseph is being tempted um, by Potiphar's wife to, to lay with her so she's coming out make, clearly making very you know very um, avid passes at him inviting him to lay, yeah flirt <laughs> <laughs> inviting him to lay with her and Joseph's response actually gives us a very good example of how we each should strive in our own lives, in our own walks, in our relationships to resist temptation. Um, and it says in verse 8, it says, But he refused, speaking of Joseph, and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master watcheth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? The important thing here is that Joseph called out sin by its right name. He knew the word of God and he knew that it would be a, 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 a wicked and evil thing for him to lay with his master's wife because he understood 
um, the, the law of God, and he understood God's adultery. exactly <laughs> adultery. Yes, God, God's commandments to his people. And so Joseph refused to give in to this because he understood and he called out sin by its right name. Nevertheless, <laughs> I'm sure many of you, and we personally know it as well, how temptation can be. So you escape one temptation, you say, ah, I'm calling sin out by his right, <laughs> by his right name, right? You're like, nah, that's, I'm not going to do that. No, get, get away. The, uh, keep me away from that wicked thing. And then the next day or the next week or the next month, that temptation comes back and even stronger. Um, and that's exactly what happened in the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. It says in Genesis 39 verse 10 that day by day after day, Potiphar's wife was continuing, continuing, continuing to make passes at him. And let's look at what Joseph's response was um, right in Genesis 39 verse 10 through, 10 through 12. And it says, And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Now, talk about some strength, some willpower. That was some serious willpower that Joseph um, had in his heart to really stick to the Word of God. It didn't matter what clothes he had on. It didn't matter what shoes he had on, like anything else that was going on. Joseph was flee freeing himself from that so that he did not, he did not go against the will and the Word of God. Um, it's just another beautiful example of how temptation may come, but we have the willpower, we have the choice to make a decision right. of whether or not we want to give in to right. it by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Very this important. just came to me with those two examples we used. So in the case with Eve and the serpent, she entertained, um, he came questioning what God said and she entertained that conversation. Mm -hmm. Joseph was over here like, listen, nah, like, <laughs> I'm not trying to go against God, like, what? And he would just, he'd go about his business trying to ignore her, and even when she tried to grab him, he was like, I'm out. <laughs> you know? So those are the two responses when we're faced with temptation. We can either entertain it, or we can cling to the Word of God mm -hmm. and flee from it. Um, and this is going to go right into the tips that we're about to give you guys. Okay, so you may be thinking, what are some tangible things that I can do to um, avoid falling into sin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we courted each other for, what was it? Ooh. What? How long? A year before getting engaged, okay. and then it was like another yeah. year and change before getting married. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of you might be courting for much longer, some shorter, but regardless, we know that as you grow in intimacy with a person, as you get to know them and your feelings develop, you want to express that physically. Yeah. How can you like d not do what your body feels like it's created yeah, yeah. or naturally supposed to do? How do you do that? So we came up with seven practical tips that can help you um, in your courtship relationship, um, and we wanted to use the number seven just to, you know, kind of. <laughs> I'm just joking. We don't really have perfect. <laughs> right, it just kind of works. But it out is a number way. of perfection. Uh, <laughs> but starting with number one, you have to spend time sincerely studying the Word of God. There are so many scriptures that encourage us to do this in Psalms and Proverbs, and essentially by studying the Word of God, the, the Word of God is likened unto a lamp, unto light. And when we study it and we receive the light that God has given to us, it will help us. To avoid stumbling into darkness. We will become familiar with what God's standard is, what is His will for our lives, and the more that we study and that we know, the more we're able to recognize temptation, and the more we're able to say, hey, you know what? I know what the Word of God says about this, and this Amen. is not the choice that I want to make right now. And as we study the Word, who is it that we begin to invite into our hearts and our lives and also our relationship? It's Jesus, and we know that we can do all things through Him. Who strengthens us so this is why we're putting this as number one the Word of God first before you can address overcome or face anything the Word of God has to come first and another way to make this even more practical is just to ask yourself well what does the Bible say about fornication what does the Bible say about adultery what does Bible the Bible say about you know sexual relationships what are the stories we can look at what are the lessons we could take away and learn the more you become versed in that knowledge 
Um, because the Bible doesn't just record perfection. Yeah. It also records human mistakes People so that fall, we can yeah. understand how God wants us to live our lives and how His grace is sufficient for what we need in this life. And so I would just suggest starting from there, asking yourself questions, what does the Bible say about this, and trying to get familiar with that. The second tip that we're going to offer here is to invest in personal and corporate prayer for strength. Um, we know that James 5 tells us that we should confess our faults to one another, that we can pray for one another and be healed um, from the different circumstances and things that happen in our lives, and also that the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So from this scripture, we know that there is so much power in prayer. Uh, one of my favorite books that I've read on prayer is called The Complete Works of E.M. Bounds on Prayer. Um, you can just type that into Amazon or you know Google or whatever and you'll find the book But it's a very powerful book on the just the importance of prayer to our lives as Christians And the power that you can release into your life just by going to your Lord and Savior in prayer And just committing you know your, your, your burdens and everything else that is on your heart um, It's important when considering you know, the topic of temptation and sin um, to look at prayer as your, your, your healing agent, something that can bring healing to your heart. Um, and it's also important to recognize that sin is corporate. And so when, 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 when one person commits a sin, the, the consequences can affect much, many, many, many more people than just that person themselves. So if we look at the example of Adam and Eve in the garden, we see how them, the, Adam, the first human sin recorded in the Bible led to death and condemnation for all human, oh, yes. yeah, the, the entire race to come after, and which was, of course, alleviated by the um, sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So we know that by one person's sin, that the entire world was brought in, the entire human race was brought into condemnation. In our own personal lives, sin can also have that very same effect where it can carry down into our bloodline, into our children, into our children, children, and you know, you never know how that, that, that one decision that you make can actually have a domino effect on others. So just as sin is corporate, we also believe that there is power in corporate prayer. We believe that, that when you share um, you know, your struggles with you know, your confidants. With discretion. And, yeah, with discretion, <laughs> with, with, your, with your confidants, with you know, those mentors you may have in your church or you know, any other really close brothers and sisters in Christ, just encouraging them and asking them uh, to pray with you, to pray for you. Um, I really, we really believe that that can, that can, really, that can, that can bring such great healing um, to your heart and also to and strength to your soul uh, to be able to combat temptation, be able to overcome it by praying to your Lord for strength and for just the power to conquer uh, that temptation. Now, the third one is to seek wise counsel and godly accountability. I believe we covered, covered accountability way back in the beginning of our courtship yeah, series. Courtship series. Yeah, I think it was like the last Part seven. Yeah, yeah, the last video in our courtship series. Checks and balances. Checks and balances, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> And we spoke about the importance of having, you know, accountability partners in your relationship and those who are going to check on you and, and call you and just make sure that you are encouraged and walking um, in the light of God. Mm -hmm. And we want to reiterate, or reiterate, sorry, reiterate, to be inventing words. We want to reiterate that point here um, based on scripture and, look, and then looking at Proverbs 15 um, verse 22, it says, without counsel purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors they are established. And so we know that we can find such great, and this kind of pours into the, the corporate prayer that we mentioned just a second ago, but you know, having a group of people around you that are going to support you, that are going to pour into you, um, that are going to hold you accountable for you know, not falling into that temptation in your um, in your walk and and people who may be you know and they don't ha everyone doesn't have to be intimately familiar with what you're personally struggling with but you can't have those go-to people um, in your church or in your Bible study group or in your you know whatever whoever it may be you can't have those intimate relationships where somebody is familiar and somebody is able to know like hey you know around this time of night let me make sure I give a text or a call to um, my brother my brother and you. sister yeah, yeah my brother and sister in Christ to you know to make sure they're staying accountable. Um, to that same hand, it's also important that within your relationship, you also have people around your relationship who are familiar with 
with both of you and can hold you both accountable for what you you know promise or what you desire to do and and and, and your um, just your true heart for worshiping God in your relationship. Essentially, you don't want to be in a courtship, you know, by your, in, a, in a little box by yourself, um, because I don't think it's going to work. I think you need to have accountability, and you need to have a community around you that's going to encourage you and support you, um, because you face trials, you know, as you're trying to do it God's way. He never said it would be completely easy. You're going to face right. trials. So when you have people around you that have either made it there or mm -hmm. going there, um, that would definitely help you and in your mindset and your perspective as well and how you deal with tempting situations. Yeah, and what, and the most important word that is is in the, the third tip is godly, is godly right before accountability. Um, truly pray for the Lord to lead you uh, and give you discernment on who you should invite into you know, your relationship as your accountability partners and into your life as your accountability partner. Ask the Lord just to show you somebody whose heart is really seeking God and is genuine and is you know, truly uh, wants and desires the best for you. Um, we know that God wouldn't want to surround you with someone who is going to bring, you know, evil temptation or just other distractions into your walk. We know from His Word it tells us it tells us in First Corinthians 15 um, that be not deceived that evil commu evil communication corrupts good manners. So right. we know that the, the the influences that we have around us are certainly going to play a role in you know in, in our walks and and how much we feel just burdened by temptation. Right, um, like yeah. if, you, if you're if you trying to overcome an addiction, let's say mm -hmm. smoking or drinking or whatever the case may be, and, you, <laughs> and you're trying to walk in a new way, you wouldn't hang around people that are doing that because you're gonna feel tempted to go back to that same addiction. Right. You have right. to hang around people that have, you know, the solution to what the problem is or are walking in the same mind and in the same actions as what you desire to do. Yeah. You don't hang out with, you know, <laughs> people that will draw you away from where you're trying to go. Yeah, and so. there is no there is no perfect accountability partner. There's no one who's no. there. But God is able to show you because God has done it in our lives and we've seen other testimonies where God is able to give somebody an accountability partner or a friend or just lead them to a brother or sister in Christ that is truly going to keep them accountable to the Word of God mm -hmm. in a loving fashion. So. Tip number four is to avoid extensive private conversations and interactions with your significant other. Mm -hmm. Now, what we are not saying is that you can't spend any time alone. <laughs> We're not saying that. <laughs> right. Because there are yes. certain conversations in development that need to happen in privacy. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is that you want to avoid those long, you know, periods of times where that is taking place. Um, we see, as I mentioned before with Eve, you know, she entertained the conversation with the serpent and where that led. Whereas in the case of Joseph, he didn't entertain that um, longer than it, it needed to be. He said what he had to say and that, that was it. <laughs> um, so yeah, you, you, you see the difference. Um, a lot of times as Christians you want to know, and I myself was guilty of this in my past, you know, how far is too far? Mm. How close can I get to, you know, this without being too, without actually sinning? Right. It's a question that we like to ask. We want to dance around the fire, but not get burned. Or we want to yeah. Netflix and chill, <laughs> but say that we're waiting for marriage. You see what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't, you can't play with it. There has to be a solid line drawn. We have to be willing to do whatever it takes to keep our actions and our thoughts pure before God. So if that means you need to set a curfew, if that means you need to have, you know, a chaperone yeah, or your dates, a third yeah. wheel with you on your dates, whatever, whatever you need, you know you, keep it real with yourself, you know you better than, you know, other, other people. And I think you need to look at yourself and say, like, look, I know that if I do this or I know that if I go over to his house right now by myself, that this might go down. Like, you know. So we say right. do whatever it takes. If that means fleeing and leaving your clothes behind like Joseph. <laughs> you got to be good. Yes, running outside naked, but if it's no other way to. It's the principle. It's the principle. <laughs> it's the principle. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you got to do whatever it takes to obey God and to keep your relationship pure before his eyes. Mm -hmm. Establish what those boundaries are and 
the lines that you're not going to cross and what you're going to do to avoid meeting them, which actually goes into our fifth tip, mm -hmm. which is to have clear standards and abide by them. You want to write down what your standards are for yourself, and of course they have to be realistic and in accordance with the Word of God. And you want to share them with someone that you can confide in, like, look, you know, this is what I've decided for myself, and I'm just asking that you can be, you know, my partner or my helper in helping me stick to this. And then pay, pray over it daily. Pray that God's, God gives you the strength to meet these standards right. and to keep them before Him, you know, as long as whatever, whatever time He has you single or in a courtship or engaged or whatever the case may be. Right. You want to make sure you pay, pray daily for His strength um, to hold on to them. And don't let pressure from anyone or don't let, you know, thoughts or people kind of put you in a position where you have to compromise that because if the Lord leads you to walk in that way, you have to trust that this is the way that you need to walk. Um, so that would be tip number five. Amen. And then also just a little bit related to that is to not, if you do fall, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't, do, the, the enemy wants to continue to accuse you and make you feel horrible about you slipping into yeah. temptation. The only the, the only thing that you have to do in that situation is take it before the Lord, repent for what happened, and then go back in your mind and recognize what is it that was that led me into falling into that sin? What 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 were the building blocks to that very moment where I truly you know transgressed the promise of the word that I had um, with God? And then take that 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 standard or that mark will help you then inform the list that Sharetta was just talking about. Like, this is where I know I need to stop or I need to walk mm -hmm. away or I need to separate myself so that I do not fall into sin, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, things might change over time as well. Like for us, when we sat down and had that first conversation about our boundaries, mm -hmm. as time went on, we had to make some changes because just different circumstances came up but we had to really say, okay, that, that that's actually not okay can't do that right. anymore yeah. <laughs> and um, so it's a growth process it's not an end-all be-all like Brandon said if you do you know happen to fall you know get back up get back up and allow God to continue to give you the strength to move forward Alrighty, and you know this is getting a little bit long here so we'll <laughs> go ahead and move quickly into point number six which is that remember in the eyes of God nothing is permanent until marriage uh, we've said this so many times before in previous videos and talks and you know emails and whatnot. But you know, keep in mind that the person who you may be courting um, or, or, or dating, if you want to use that term, that person could be somebody else's future spouse and you want to approach your relationship and your interactions with them guarding yourself um, with, it, with the boundaries that you've identified so that you do not transgress your brother or sister in Christ that may become the future spouse for this person who you're courting. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to always just keep that in mind. You don't want to send somebody into you know, their future marriage or future you know, relate, courting relationship being hurt from you know, emotional turmoil in the past. And you know, many of us come from so many broken relationships and we know what it personally feels like to go through those um, emotions and go through those stages of, of, a, of a breakup or of a relationship and it's very painful and but to the best of our ability we want to keep in mind that nothing is permanent until marriage and until marriage guard yourself guard your heart and guard that other person so that they are not uh, heading into their 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 future marriage or whatever from their time spent yeah from the time spent with you that they aren't emotionally damaged right and last but not least number seven is that pleasing God will always be more rewarding than pleasing someone else always. physically. Always. Always. <laughs> First, I actually want to read the scripture. First Samuel 2 verse 30 says, um, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me and for them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So as you seek to honor God in your life, in your walk, in your relationship, and everything you do, mm -hmm. he will honor you in return. Even looking back to the story of Joseph that we mentioned earlier, we see how even after Joseph refused to lay with Potiphar's wife for the 
we don't know if it was the second or the third or the fourth time, but the last time where he fled from her, he was thrown into jail. Right. He was thrown into prison. And he was probably like, yo, like... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guy. I, I, I didn't commit <laughs> sin against you. Like, I was honoring you, right? Yeah, he probably But should. if you stay true to reading that story, you see... The, 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 yeah, the, the beautiful out, yeah, exactly. Right. The beautiful outcome right. of, of, of what you know transpired later um, in those chapters of Genesis and how Joseph and his family were just elevated to a completely a new right. level. And so. ultimately, what we're trying to say is that no relationship should be more important or come before your obedience to God. Mm -hmm. You know, demonstrating your love for Him through obedience to His commands is always far greater than demonstrating your love to you know, this person you're in a relationship and then you feel like in the moment, I have to do this to show that I love them. Like, no, actually, show love to your creator yeah. is the greatest thing, our greatest, Amen. you know, responsibility, I would say, as a Christian. And so we want to bring home that point that aim to please God, not yeah. man. Aim to, you know, let him be, look down at your life and say, my child, I am well pleased. Um, and be comfortable in knowing that. I'm pretty sure what got Joseph through his experience in prison was just remembering that God honors those who honors him. And he made that choice to flee from wickedness, from sin. And I, I, I believe he just held on to the, onto the fact that God was going to honor him in return for making that decision. Amen. So I think this was a bit, <laughs> it might longer. be a bit longer than we anticipated, but we wanted to give these tips because yes. we know we know the struggle. We know the struggle. Truly. Just because we're married now doesn't mean we forgot. <laughs> so Very we really true. wanted to give you guys tips, scriptures you can study for yourself, things you can think about mm -hmm. for yourself, and to discuss with your partner um, that yeah. you can you know apply. And we really pray that this was helpful and, uh, and it was a blessing to you. Yes, and we just want to you know, we really want to put this point or hammer this point home is that. You know, encourage you all to keep your keep your eyes fixed on eternity. Keep eternity in your perspective. Um, every sacrifice, every boundary is worth it when we have our eyes fixed on Jesus and making sure that we, um, as His people, are prepared uh, for Him to receive us as His bride. So um, we hope that this video uh, was encouraged. Sure was an encouragement to you, and know that we are truly praying for you as well. And two really quick things, and we'll get out your way. And mm -hmm. <laughs> one is that. We are going to follow up to this video with the Periscope yeah, um, so that we need to use Periscope. <laughs> we told y'all to follow us, so we need to use this. So we're going to follow it up. If you have questions or things you want to ask us based on this video or anything else that you want please, to discuss, um, please comment with them below and then join us. Um, it's going to be on December 23rd. Um, six. It's a Wednesday yeah. at 6 o'clock p.m. Central Time. That's 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And then you can... Mount subtract Pacific. to do right <laughs> and we'll post that below we'll post our names where you can follow us um mm -hmm. decide which whose account we we'll yeah. use or whatever and the periscope yeah. will be saved so if you don't catch it you know we'll also have it um right we'll we'll yeah. also um try to live stream through youtube never use that function before don't, don't know how it works oh, but yeah we know that some of you said you don't have periscope so if you don't we'll try to live stream youtube yes. as well but the important um, thing to remember is Wednesday, December 23rd, 23rd email at us 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Central Time. Central Time. Right. And email email us any questions you have and comment with any questions mm -hmm. below. Um, second thing, <laughs> we've gotten this question a couple of times now, so we figured we should probably just put it in a video. Right. Um, <laughs> so that you you know. <laughs> and hear um, from us. Right. Yeah. But uh, a few people have asked us, where are your running wings? Why aren't you wearing running wings? <laughs> We are married. We are married. We <laughs> but, have the um, certificate. You know, I, actually, the right after we picked out our wedding dance, mm -hmm. a series of things happened, and we were led to do a study on wedding rings. Yeah. And from what we studied, we just made a personal decision for us that we didn't want to wear them. Um, and we were we we decided to just see what would happen you know yeah, and that, honestly that's yeah and honestly when you look at the wedding um and, and we've heard this from several people that they didn't even realize that we, we didn't, didn't have a, an exchange of rings or anything right. like that right. in the in, in the wedding so it was right. a personal conviction that we had that we right. just did not want um to wear them in for our us, yeah right. yeah for us so right. 
Um, if you're interested in, interested in knowing more about that, just email us and we'll be sure to uh, you know, answer back and write to you about you know, more in detail. But that's what it is. So, mm -hmm. so you won't see any. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we love you all. Love you guys. Yes. Thank you again. See you in the next we'll video. We'll see you on Periscope in the next video. Bye, y'all. Bye.